Thank you for visiting this video segment for Dr. AFib. I'm Dr. Morales. In today's video segment, we're going to be talking about coronary artery disease together with the management of atrial fibrillation. Many patients who have atrial fibrillation have other heart conditions as well that they're dealing with, including coronary artery disease. So I like to do a video where I help give my tips for patients that have both atrial fibrillation as well as coronary artery disease. And so if you've had a heart attack in the past, or you've had stents inside of your heart, or you've had bypass surgery, uh, this video is for you to help me give your t my tips about atrial fibrillation together with coronary artery disease. And I've talked, to start off with, I've talked several times in previous videos about the risk factors for coronary artery disease being very similar uh, to the risk factors for getting coronary artery disease. The most common risk factors for getting atrial fibrillation are high blood pressure, diabetes, advanced age, as well as obesity. And those are very common risk factors to also have coronary artery disease as well. So if you've been diagnosed with atrial fibrillation, please make sure you also get screened for coronary artery disease. Uh, some simple tests for screening for coronary artery disease are stress tests or a coronary calcium CAT scan. Those are very common screening tests for evaluating for coronary artery disease. But what about the patients who already have coronary artery disease, that they've already had a heart attack or have had stents or already had bypass surgery and then later on start to develop atrial fibrillation as well? And so what tips can I give to these patients that have both of these heart conditions? First, the tips are involve minimizing symptoms from atrial fibrillation. For people that have underlying coronary artery disease, as well as atrial fibrillation, how do you minimize the symptoms that you get from the atrial fibrillation? Fortunately, one of the most common medications that are used for atrial fibrillation in the category of beta blockers where metoprolol, atenolol, carvedilol may be the most common ones that are, are used. They're helpful for both atrial fibrillation as well as coronary artery disease and can be very useful in the management of both conditions to help reduce a patient's symptoms and it's probably one of the most commonly used uh, medications. So they're very safe to use for both coronary artery disease as well as atrial fibrillation. When it comes to managing atrial fibrillation, there are also stronger medications in the category of antiarrhythmics, which are a little bit stronger for atrial fibrillation uh, in terms of minimizing, I'm sorry, a little bit stronger than beta blockers for minimizing the symptoms of atrial fibrillation. However, many of these antiarrhythmics, particularly flecainide and, and profafenone, which are commonly used, they have increased risks of having uh, abnormal side effects or bad side effects from the medication in people who also have coronary artery disease. And so if you have coronary artery disease and also have atrial fibrillation, you have to be very careful uh, with your doctor which medications are safe to be used in that setting. But there are a few antiarrhythmics that can be used, but there are also several that have to be used in caution for people who have underlying coronary artery disease. But probably one of the bigger topics I talk about in somebody who has coronary artery disease as well as atrial fibrillation is in the topic of blood thinning medication. People who have had a stent in their heart or they've had bypass or have had a heart attack are frequently already taking blood thinning medication. Uh, commonly taken aspirin, other medications may include Plavix or Berlinta or Effiant and those are very commonly used uh, blood thinning medications for people who have stents or coronary, other types of coronary artery disease. And those work in a specific manner to thin your blood. They work on these tiny little uh, cells called platelets and that's how they block those platelets to help thin a person's blood and they can work very well for coronary artery disease in order to try to keep a person's stents open or try to prevent a heart attack and they're very good medications for those. However, they don't work as well for reducing risk of stroke for somebody who has atrial fibrillation. When you have atrial fibrillation, the main blood thinning medication to reduce risk of stroke include warfarin, Xarelto, Eliquis, Pradaxa, Cerveza, the other ones that are most commonly used. And these work in a different manner to thin a person's blood. They actually block some of these tiny little proteins that are inside of your uh, blood to help thin your blood. And that's why those medications for atrial fibrillation are in a different category. They're called anticoagulation medications whereas the ones used for stents and coronary disease are antiplatelet medications. So they work 
differently the two, the two medications to thin a person's blood. So when a person is first diagnosed with atrial fibrillation and they also have underlying coronary artery disease, and I might have to recommend them a blood thinner to reduce risk of stroke, they may say, well, I'm already taking aspirin or Plavix. I'm already taking a blood thinning medication. And you have to explain to patients that the blood thinners for AFib and the blood thinners for coronary artery disease work in uh, different mechanisms. And unfortunately, a lot of times people are actually needed to take both types of medications because the ones for the platelets work great for the coronary disease and your stents and then the ones for the anticoagulation work great for reducing the risk of stroke. However, being on multiple blood thinning medications also increases a person's risk for bleeding. Uh, so that's certainly a very careful conversation that you have to have your doctor to see which type of blood thinners you actually need and to minimize the amount that you actually have to take. But uh, in order to keep your stents open or keep uh, prevent a heart attack, and also to reduce risk of stroke, sometimes multiple uh, blood thinners are necessary. So please discuss with your doctor which ones are the right blood thinners for you. Thank you for visiting this video segment for Dr. AFib. I'll see you next time.